Broadcasting from Singapore and broadcasting all around the world. You're listening to the Ignite EdTech Podcast with Craig Kemp, created by an educator for educators and streaming to the world. Now, over to your host, Craig Kemp. Hello and welcome to episode 121 of the Ignite EdTech Podcast. I'm your host, Craig Kemp, and I'm honored to have you join us. Over the past three weeks, I've had the absolute pleasure of taking some time out with my family and spending time with the most incredible friends. I've also, over the past week, been leading learning at the World EduLead Summit as a keynote speaker and workshop host, an incredible, inspiring event with over a thousand educators in attendance. I love leading learning and I love inspiring others to connect and engage. If you're a new listener, thank you. I appreciate your support, engagement, and willingness to stay up to date to support your learners in the future. I continue to work with the incredibly talented Mark Quinn to improve the final audio quality of this podcast. He has his own podcast production studio that provides editing and mastering services to content creators. To connect with Mark, please see the details in the podcast notes below. A tool that has positively impacted the authentic and purposeful use of technology into classrooms and meeting rooms that I have worked in is Equity Maps. Equity Maps is an app that enables teachers to track speakers and behaviours during small or large group conversations. Teachers choose from a number of seating configurations and add participants, male, female or non-binary options are included. They populate the room via names and symbols like you'd see on a restroom door. Teachers can drag and place these icons in seats. Once everyone is seated, teachers tap record to start the session and tap the symbols as students speak. Each tap draws a line or curve to the next participant, allowing teachers to see the flow of the discussion, including who's oversharing and who's being left out. Buttons at the top of the screen allow for tracking things like silence, chaos, teacher talk, media and more. There's also a chance to add notes in case there's something from the discussion worth revisiting. I've used this before in an observation role. I love seeing this being used in a school where open door observations occur, where teachers request feedback from their peers and value the input from others. The premium version has a check notes feature that lets teachers track positive behaviours, such as redirecting dialogue constructively and citing references, as well as negative behaviours, like going off topic and interrupting. At the end of each session, teachers can play back the recording and view individual and group data about the conversation. Equity Maps can be a novel way for teachers to track and better assess students' group communication skills and habits, but teachers will have to be consistent and build in time to reflect on what the data says. Teachers will need to be patient and thoughtful with using this data. Is a talkative student dominating discussion or just over-eager? Is a quiet student feeling silenced or just someone who takes a lot of time to process and needs an opportunity at the end to speak up? Still, the mindful and well-structured use of equity maps could help students build valuable self-control and self-awareness skills. Students should be made aware that they're being recorded, given appropriate expectations, assured that this is being done in a non-judgmental way and offered concrete ways to improve based on what teachers observe. I highly recommend that you take a look at the link in the description below, equitymaps.com. Last week, I was honoured to lead learning at the World EduLead Summit with more than 1,000 educators from across the globe. As a keynote speaker and workshop host, I led two keynotes inspiring conversations and thinking about edtech, innovation and culture, and then ran two full-day workshops for teachers and leaders to develop practices and culture shifts to inspire the authentic and purposeful use of technology in their classrooms and schools. This week, I wanted to highlight my five key takeaways from my learning and conversations with educators and leaders over the past week at this event. Number one, the Singapore education system develops incredibly talented educators, and I'm not just saying that. The amount of Singaporean teachers I met with an incredibly inspiring background and story really opened my eyes. I've lived here for almost 11 years now, in Singapore, and I'm still in awe of the curriculum and teaching excellence that's instilled here and the staff that work. The respect for educators within this community is second to none, and it makes me really proud to not only live here, but also be a part of the growing community of inspiring educators ready to take on the world. 
There are many things that need to improve within this system, but there is willingness to learn and grow. Number two, technology does not equal innovation. In my keynote, I talked about the power of technology, but more importantly, that innovation and technology do not go hand in hand. Innovation can exist without technology and, of course, vice versa. The importance of being innovative as an educator is more important now than ever before. But knowing when to use technology to add value to learning in your context is a critical component to any successful technology or innovation integration and rollout. Number three, technology is changing at a faster rate than ever before. We talked about the power of change and the importance of keeping up with the incredible rate of change. Change is going to continue happening within the tech landscape faster than ever before. The importance of being connected and understanding the change is important. You don't need to be an expert. You just need to stay up to date or you will get left behind. The way I do this is via my PLN online and connecting and engaging in conversations with amazing people online and in person. Number four, culture eats strategy for breakfast. The great Peter Drucker coined this phrase, and it's something I believe in a great deal. Now that I do a lot of work with schools and ecosystems globally looking to change and enhance in the tech and innovation space, strategic change cannot occur in any environment if there's not a culture in order to drive and support this change. People need to buy in and feel valued as a key contributor to the change at hand. Top-down leadership does not result in successful and long-term change in attitudes and strategy. In our organizations, we need to develop a culture where everyone is invested and a culture where learning happens without top-down leadership. I'm thrilled to be traveling to South America in May to start this process with a large school there that I'll be working with over the next few years to make sustainable and long-term change and to develop the areas leading tech and innovation across the school. If you're interested in learning more about this work for your school or institution, don't hesitate to reach out. And number five, AI will not replace teachers, but those not willing to learn will be replaced by those that are. Artificial intelligence is a buzzword at the moment, in particular ChatGPT. Last week, in this event, we spent a lot of time looking at the current and future possibilities of how this will positively impact teachers in their roles. In particular, how we can save time by using ChatGPT to do the same work for us. The teachers in my masterclasses were blown away by the possibilities, and I've already heard from many of them that have gone away and implemented some of this in their works and roles already this week. Congratulations to those teachers who are go-getters and want to make change and make a difference. Very inspiring. I shared many photos and information about this on my social channels over the last week, so go check it out. And to learn more, please connect and follow on your social channel of choice and don't hesitate to reach out with your questions, thoughts, and ideas. Every week, I bring you a short interview with some of my edu heroes, an engaging learning experience with someone who makes a difference in education every day, with a particular focus or angle towards educational technology. This week, I had the pleasure of chatting with Lindsay Studdard. Let's have a listen to the chat. Today, I have the honor of speaking with Lindsay Studdard, who you may know as at Dive 85 on Twitter. Lindsay is the Digital Teaching and Learning Specialist at ACS International School in Cobham, UK. Lindsay's been named as a top 10 educator in EdTech and is an expert in the field of leveraging tools in tech to design bespoke AR experiences relevant to the curriculum, as well as the role of digital creativity and how it plays a part in aiding students' learning and understanding. Lindsay is an Apple Distinguished Educator and Apple Professional Learning Specialist and constantly shares incredible learning, particularly in the AR space. Lindsay, it's a pleasure to have you on the show today. Are you ready to talk about education and technology integration? Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me today. It's an absolute pleasure. Let's go. Why don't you start by telling us a little bit about your current role and what inspires you to do what you do? Certainly. So currently I work as a digital teaching and learning specialist, which is very similar to the role of um, a digital learning coach. And so that means that I work alongside the teaching staff to keep them abreast of new changes in technology, 
ways that we can integrate it into the classroom um, and getting them to innovate more with the tools that they have access to. And I think what really inspires me to do what I do is it comes from what is potentially possible with the technology if we just step outside the box a little bit more. And I think that journey of discovery of what is, is not necessarily the norm is really exciting, especially when we try it and we have some successes with the students to see the long, the long lasting benefits that that can have. Yeah, it's exciting to hear you say that as well, Lindsay. And I think that the part of that that gets me excited is the, the down to earth nature of the things that are happening for you and in your classroom and with students in your school and teachers in your school, but not just there globally. And then the space of sharing online and connecting and engaging with other people. And we'll get to that a little bit later on. I'm really curious to learn a little bit more about your educational journey, Lindsay. What led you to the role you're in now and why did you choose to specialize in this digital space? So it's very interesting. I was having a good think about that earlier today um, because my background is in early childhood education. It's what I got my degrees in. It's what I've had the most experience teaching. And that's what I started out being a teacher in was early childhood. I've taught in the States, in the UAE, in Italy, and now in the UK. But I didn't start really getting into the use of technology until iPads were starting to be introduced. And I really loved getting the opportunity to have those in one of my schools in the UAE. And then when I went into more gifted education and we were differentiating differentiating things a lot more for students, I was really starting to see the role that technology could play. And then I fully embraced it when I was in Italy and, and stepped into more of that coaching role outside of the classroom, because sometimes it can really be beneficial for teachers to have someone who is very knowledgeable about education and pedagogical approaches that can then say, here's a pathway forwards for you to easily integrate technology um, into what it is that you're teaching. So I never intended to go into ed tech or to be in that type of support role. I always intended to be a classroom teacher, um, but I'm glad that things have evolved in that way that has given me this new opportunity. It's a, a really exciting journey you've been on, Lindsay, seeing you grow and develop and flourish and share uh, as an Apple Distinguished Educator and, and an Apple Professional Learning Specialist. Just touching on some of the stuff, I'm curious about the APLS and the ADE. You've been in so many different countries around the world and different locations. How have you found that in terms of that global community and bringing people together wherever you end up on your journey as an educator? I think that is one of the big benefits of, of being part of the, the Apple education community and working with Apple technology is you start to learn uh, a similar language and you can reference things quite easily with each other, even with people that you've never met, you've never had a face-to-face conversation with, um, or maybe even talked to uh, on a, a video call. But because you have that similar language, if there's something that you need help with, you can reach out and there's people there to support you uh, and guide you uh, through through different problem solving that, that you may need assistance with. So I think that that's one of the really great things is more and more schools are investing in Apple technology and it's just giving us all sort of that same framework to work within. It's very different if you're going to have lots of different types of technology in your school because you have to learn a lot of different languages basically to communicate regarding the tech that you're using. But with the fluidity of the Apple products and the the, the knowledge that everyone is able to share because people who work with Apple are big sharers of what they do because they want to share the successes and, and how it's helped. I think that almost gives you access to uh, this this big global network of people that, that get it and that will step in to help you if you need it. And this ties really nicely into what I want to move into next. And I think this journey that you've been on with Apple technology and, and what Apple technology can do to enhance and add value to learning in the classroom you are known as the AR queen. (laughs) I'd love to learn more about AR and the power of it in the classroom, Lindsay, because people listening uh, probably have heard of AR, maybe have seen it, but don't know how to use it in their classrooms to be authentic and purposeful. So where should educators listening today start on this journey? And then, you know, what are the things you're seeing in this AR world? So I think some of the crucial things just off the top of my head is really coming to to grips with loving the camera. 
on your iPad. I think we take it for granted a lot in the sense of just using it for taking photographs or um, taking video, but actually the camera can be that that entrance way into this world of augmented reality. It's putting a digital layer directly into your real world, but that is being facilitated through that particular piece of hardware, which is your camera. I would really encourage people who want to start with AR to think about what is it I want to accomplish? What is it that using AR is going to to benefit me and my students and their understanding of what I'm trying to teach them? So there's two key ways that you could do this with AR. One is to choose some apps that are for, in a way, content consumption, but purposeful consumption. So not just things that are going to be a wow moment um, and then we move on and we never talk about it again, but ways that we're truly integrating it so that it's going to be meaningful in the way it's being used in the classroom. One example I can give is the WWF Forest app that is free to download and we make use of it with our pre-K children. These are four to five-year-olds. And the premise is they have a unit all about understanding about the ecosystem of a rainforest, what animals live there, what species live there, how they are connected to each other, and then looking at what role do humans play and the devastation that can happen when we interfere in that ecosystem. And we found that the WWF Forest app works incredibly well to highlight that understanding to students in a very concrete way. And as students progress through the different chapters in that app, bringing different uh, types of forests into their real world, being able to explore them, being able to see the different animals that are there, being able to learn different pieces of information. And at the end in the last chapter, a sort of a summative assessment of all the learning they've done between the digital classes and the regular classroom on rainforest, they then get the opportunity to put themselves in the driving seat and design and build their own rainforest with the built-in content. So that's been a really powerful way of using one app on a continuous basis throughout a unit to keep dipping into the understanding and encouraging students to become comfortable with this technology to the point that they're able to then create and design their own rainforest at the end. So that's the content consumption piece. On the other side, the flip side is as you get more and more comfortable with using AR, you then as a teacher might start thinking about, well, how can I actually use this technology to have my students create. So we think about our digital toolbox that we have. We can take photographs, we can do videos, we can make music, we can um, do coding, we can do drawing. We at ACS view the use of augmented reality as another tool in that toolbox. It's another way that students can find a pathway to be able to share their understanding. Um, And what I mean by that is if you think about the options uh, for how children can share their understanding. Not every child is going to want to do that in the same way. And if we can leverage the power of the creative toolbox on iPad for students and say, well, you pick which which uh, pathway is going to be best for you to share your understanding for me, as long as you meet, you know, the rubric and the criteria that I'm expecting, then you can share your understanding back to me in however you want. Well, why couldn't we have students do a 3D design that they can then bring into AR and walk around and take a screen recording and explain to the audience what they have created? I think that is an incredibly powerful way of providing students access to share their understanding. So we have here uh, a pilot program this year in our digital design club for our middle school students. So our middle school students uh, during the pandemic and, and the subsequent year after were our um, AR gurus in primary school. So they had a lot of AR experiences during their sort of third and fourth grade years. And then when they went to middle school, they got the opportunity, um, a select few that were interested to join Digital Design Club. Now, those students who have an understanding of AR and 3D design and 2D design and know how these tools work based on what they previously experienced, they now are coming up with their own designs that are solutions to problems based on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And it's giving them access to be able to have their voice at their level on global issues that do matter and that do need to be brought into classrooms more often. And so these students have spent uh, the past few months looking at different issues based on the SDGs and designing their own solutions for them, how they think we could be making changes as humans to uh, combat some of the things that are going on in the world today. Yeah, it's so exciting to hear that, Lindsay. It really pumps me up 
thinking of the things that you're doing and we'll make sure that all the links to you and the work you're doing are shared in the podcast notes below as well. Let's jump into some quick fire questions. The first thing that comes to your head and maybe a brief why, what's your favorite EdTech book or resource? Honestly, I think it has to be Twitter and it's not normally a thought of EdTech resource, but it has been an absolute game changer for me because if I didn't have it, and the professional side, I wouldn't have the connections that I have now. I would not have started the Create for a Cause group, and I wouldn't have had a lot of the opportunities to speak about AR that I currently do. And so I'm forever grateful for uh, my Twitter uh, learning community that I've, I've curated over the last few years. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. A fantastic resource. What's your go-to edtech tool that the listeners need to try? Freeform. Freeform, freeform, freeform. It's the new tool on iPad that everyone is just jumping on the bandwagon with and coming up with amazing ideas for use in the classroom. And if you're interested in bringing AR more purposefully into your classroom, I highly recommend looking into freeform because what we've found is that we are able to uh, bring AR files into freeform that students can then easily access without having to go to too many different places. So we've actually used AR in freeform with our early childhood children. So much like you might put children on uh, Google and go look for 3D animals, we've eliminated that even um, going forwards so that they can have one single source of truth for everything that they need when looking at animals in AR. So definitely freeform on iPad. Outstanding. And the link to that's in the podcast notes below as well. Lindsay, what's one daily habit or practice that helps you enjoy, progress and succeed in your career? I like to keep feedback from staff members that have walked away from an experience with me that they've had a positive outcome. And if they're kind enough to write to me or give me their feedback, I keep those notes just for me as a reminder that what I'm doing is making a difference in someone else's life. And that is sort of my daily reminder that who I'm doing it for and how it's helping them to be better at what they do. Even if they're not as passionate to the level that I may be, it's making a difference in their life. And I think that is the reason that I get up and do what I do is it's for them. It is for those people that I am able to support. So I like keeping those just in a little place for me to look back on and, and just see that I have in fact been making an impact. Incredible. And I really love that. And it's really exciting to hear the passion comes out when I'm chatting to you here, Lindsay, of the things you do and why you do it. You know, I talk a lot about Simon Sinek and the work he says around people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And it's very clear to see that you're in this, you're passionate about this, you're driving change and you're making impact. Uh, And I'm really excited and thrilled to have had the opportunity to chat with you today. I know the listeners will be excited as well. What's the best way for them to follow and connect with you? So they can follow me on Twitter. I think that's probably my go-to place to um, share, especially with AR. I like to also post in the Apple Education community in the teaching forum. Um, I like to share some things that are going on uh, in my world, in my life there as well. Um, Or they can connect with me via my website, which is um, innovateeducate.com, which I can provide that link for you as well. Amazing, Lindsay. Thank you so much for your time today. Super inspirational. Thank you for having me. I've appreciated it. Next week, join me for episode 122 of the Ignite EdTech podcast, when I'm joined by Alan Fan and Aparna Sundara. If you enjoyed today's episode, please follow us and share the podcast with your PLN and colleagues. Please remember to spend a few minutes to rate this podcast too on your podcast channel of choice so we can reach even more educators and edtech enthusiasts globally. Remember, you have the chance to win as well. Check out the links in the description for more, and I'll see you again next week. If you liked today's episode, please don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss another episode. And be in the drawing to win prizes every week. If you know others that would enjoy the show, please hit that share button and brighten their day. Join us again next week for your weekly edtech hit with at Mr. Kemp NZ. We'll see you again soon.